out to your kitchen, make a cup of coffee. This is the standard beginning of the day for most Americans and most people in the world. Here, you need this. Today we'll be talking about the composition of coffee and its effects on the human body. I'm ready. We can bet that your morning brew has more importance to your body than you think it does. Now we will be talking about the process of roasting coffee at temperatures around 150 degrees Celsius to 200 degrees Celsius, Maillard reaction happens. This reaction involves carbonyl groups from sugars and amino groups and proteins reacting to form aroma and flavor compounds. Hundreds of coffee flavor compounds are formed from Maillard reaction, including the potent coffee aroma flavor compound 2 chlorophyll as shown over here. Now, acidity in coffee comes partially from the acids that are actually generated by the Maillard reaction, which is mainly acidic acid. However, other acids are actually naturally present in the beans themselves. These acids include citric acid, malic acid, and most predominantly a family of acids called chlorogenic acids, which we will be discussing in more detail later during this presentation. We are at the caramelization process. So from temperatures around 170 degrees Celsius to 200 degrees Celsius, the sugars in coffee start caramelizing, which browns the sugar and releases aromatic and acidic compounds. Now during roasting, most of the sucrose is actually converted to caramelized compounds. And over here, we've shown one simple example of what sucrose is going to be converted into, of it breaking down into simpler compounds. The step of the first crack. So at 205 degrees Celsius, the pressure buildup in the bean because of the water vaporizing is actually enough to cause the bean to expand and crack, both physically and audibly. So far, this reaction has actually been endothermic since vaporization takes in energy like we learned in class. Um, as you can see from this graph, the reactions that were described before are actually all happening simultaneously, even though we separate them in order to simplify and understand the process. Now the first crack makes the bean double in size, and prior to the first crack, the bean changes its color from green or yellow to a light at the step of pyrolysis. Pyrolysis means decomposition of a compound brought about by elevated temperatures. This starts to happen at around 220 degrees Celsius as the heat causes a chemical change inside the coffee bean and leads to the production of compounds like acetaldehyde and release of carbon dioxide among other compounds. Pyrolysis continues as the temperatures rise to 225 degrees Celsius to 230 degrees Celsius, causing a second crack in the bean. The second crack is the cellulose in the cell wall of the bean breaking apart. The bean is now a medium dark brown in color and has an oily sheen as the oils are released. Now the roasting process is complete. After the roasting process is complete, the bean must actually be cooled down immediately. Since pyrolysis is an exothermic process and can cause the beans to actually burn if the, they're allowed to um, cool down gradually. Now we will be talking about the compounds that are actually present in the coffee bean and in the cup of coffee that you are drinking. So stay tuned. First of all, we'll be talking about the non-volatile alkaloids that are present in the coffee. So um, non-volatile actually refers to substances that don't easily evaporate and um, alkaloids are a class of nitrogen containing compounds, most of which are basic in nature. Um, caffeine is obviously the most heard of non-volatile alkaloid that is present in coffee. Um, as you can see, the structure of caffeine is actually quite similar to the structure of adenosine and <clears throat> this allows it to act as a competitive inhibitor. The most studied effect of caffeine on the human body is its ability to bind to adenosine receptors in the brain. So adenosine actually plays an important role in the sleep-wake cycle. When adenosine binds to enough receptors, it signals to the brain that it's time for you to rest. And by preventing adenosine from binding to the receptors, caffeine actually covers up the drowsiness symptoms. Furthermore, elevated levels of adenosine in your bloodstream causes the adrenal gland to release adrenaline. 
which makes you further feel alert and energetic. Now, besides that, many studies have also shown that caffeine actually increases the basal metabolic rate in adults. volatile alkaloid that is present in your coffee that is super important is trigonaline. Now trigonaline is a derivative of vitamin B3 which actually breaks down partially during the roasting process into niacin, niacin or vitamin B3. Now coffee provides you with your daily recommended dose of vitamin B3 which plays a very important role in producing certain hormones in the adrenal gland and it also helps remove harmful chemicals from the liver, among other things. Besides that, recent studies have shown that trigonaline may actually help reduce dental caries by preventing the bacteria Streptococcus mutants from actually adhering to the teeth. In addition, this compound has been able to regenerate dendrites and exons in animal models, suggesting that it may even improve memory. Dendrites and exons are specialized projection of neurons that carry information to and from the cell. So as you can see, there's a lot of potential trigonaline bonds. Today, we will be talking about cyclotronic acids. More specifically, we'll be discussing chlorogenic acids, which is the part of cyclotronic acid isomer. Now, cyclotronic acid is composed of caffeic acid and quinic acid combined to form these three isomers. These three isomers are neochlorogenic acid, cryptochlorogenic acid, and chlorogenic acid. Now, chlorogenic acid is the most abundant of the three, which is why we'll be discussing this one, because it has the most effect on the taste and the aroma of coffee. So what is an isomer? An isomer is specifically these three compounds. They have the same chemical formula, but they have different orientations of the caffeic acid and quinic acid around each compound. Now, how is that different from a resonance structure? Resonance structure deals specifically with the electrons of the compounds, whereas isomers will deal with the atoms and the electrons of the compound. Now we will be talking about the composition of chlorogenic acid. So, chlorogenic acid is mainly composed of esters, but what is an ester? An ester is a chemical compound that is derived from an acid, typically a carboxylic acid like you can see here, where at least one OH group is replaced by an O alkyl. So, if you look here at the chlorogenic acid, you can see where it once used to be an OH group with caffeic acid, now turn into an O alkyl group. So, why is this important to us? Well, regarding coffee, it's very important that the ester has a low heat resistance because the high roasting temperature of the brew will cause the ester to break apart, the CGA to break apart, and cause the aroma that we associate with coffee today. Now, if you use different beans, it will cause different flavors and also different aromas. So a Robusta versus an Arabica would have different flavors as most of us know, but they will also have different scents because they have different percentages of the CGA in each individual bean. CGA plays a role in weight loss and lowering high blood pressure. Hypertension leads to high blood pressure, and one of the enzymes that plays a big role in this is angiotensin converting enzyme, which changes angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. And this hormone basically acts on venous and arterial smooth muscle, and it makes the blood it makes the blood vessels constrict, which is called vasoconstriction, which leads to high blood pressure because it's the same amount of blood that's moving through. A smaller area which is not good for the body and CGA helps prevent this by so these are the phenyl hydroxyl groups and they'll bind with the amino acid groups on the active site which prevents the substrate from going in which allows for vasodilation to happen which lowers the blood pressure because there's more area for the blood to pump through. 
Another beneficial aspect of CGA is its ability to act as an antioxidant. So antioxidants function to neutralize free radicals, which are atoms or molecules that don't have an even number of electrons, which means that one of them is unpaired. And because atoms want to gain a noble gas configuration, or at least have all the electrons paired up, the radicals will try to gain electrons from any other source, which means that it'll often damage macromolecules in the body. And specifically for DNA, this would be bad because like the right proteins can't form in our body. So in order to prevent this, there are are things called antioxidants, which prevents oxidation, oxidation, which means like atoms, molecules losing these electrons. So it will donate one of the electrons to the neutralize, to neutralize these free radicals. So then it'll have like the eight or at least an even number, and it's able to do this without becoming a free radical itself. But in some cases, it can actually become a pro-oxidant, which means it's promoting oxidation and the losing of electrons. So in the presence of reactive metals like iron and copper, it'll donate the electron to CGA, which will in turn donate the electron to oxygen, and this will damage macromolecules. But in some cases, this can actually be beneficial because it would lead to beta oxidation of fatty acids, which would lead to weight loss, because the oxidation leads the leads to the fatty acids breaking down. And because they're breaking down, they're not accumulating in our body and helps weight loss. During the course of this video, we introduced you to the process of roasted coffee, which involves Maillard reaction, caramelization, second crack, and pyrolysis, all of which are very, very important to the taste and flavor of your coffee. Furthermore, we discussed the breakdowns of different compounds in coffee. Sugars broke down into simpler compounds. Trinoline broke down into vitamin D3 and pyrimine. Organic acids break down into CO2. Chlorogenic acids break down into these three lactones, so clinic acid lactones, chlorogenic acid lactose, and caffeic, caffeic and ferulic acid. And as you can see here, this is what clinic acid looks like. We also talked about how the different components of coffee affect our body. For caffeine, it's associated with the feeling of alertness and increasing the basal metabolic rate, and it interferes with the sleep-wake cycle by interfering with how adenosine interacts with its receptors. And for trigonaline, it reduces dental caries and improves memory, and also functions in hormone production. And for CGA, it's associated with lowering blood pressure, acting as an antioxidant, and helping weight loss. Overall, the brew of coffee is much more complex than putting grounds to a drip machine and hitting start. There's a host of reactions that is necessary to occur both within the machine and the biological machine.